Hello. Don't mind my hair. I have not taken a shower yet, but I'll be happy to give you a hand here real quick, Tassie, if you need it. Um, we'll try to get you figured out so we can get your audio and sound going here. Let me turn the light on. I try to help people out in the test rooms when I can. Um, first thing you want to do is look up in the URL bar up at the top of your browser. And if you're not using Chrome, I recommend you do. Blab is pretty much optimized for Chrome. Uh, you can pick on my picture in the window there and make me a co-host and that way we can keep this room open so you can come back in in a few minutes. Oh, no problem. Not a problem at all. We run into this with new folks all the time. Everybody's coming out here trying to get things fixed. So if you go to that camera icon and pick on that, you'll see the two devices that are set up for your system right now. If they do not match what you're using, uh, you can pick on the settings link below at the very bottom of that window, and you'll have some more settings that you can play with. But really, all you need is your default camera and your default sound device. And then you do need to refresh if you change that. So... Make sure you flip through, just either hit the refresh button or control F5 or leave the blab and come back in. You should still be able to find me. Hello to the others. Who else is in the room here today? That would be PJ. How you doing? Or PJ Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. I hate that word. I can never say that word. <laughs> How are you this morning? Uh, just trying to help Tassie out. I saw she was struggling and I got to get in the shower after that. I have not been in the shower yet. So I look a mess. That's the one thing about Blab. You jump on here in the morning. It's like, oh, my God, I better get a shower first. Hey, Bill, how you doing? Okay. Now you can see me. You don't. Yeah. If you need to click in an open seat, Tassie, go ahead and grab the other seat there. Hey, PJ. Hey, hey. Hear me? Hear yeah, I can hear you fine. Not a problem. Hey, I'm just trying to figure out how this thing works. I heard there's 168 hours of entrepreneurial streaming. How do I find it? Uh, you should be able to find There's Tassie. Hold on a second, PJ. You should actually, PJ, you should be able to find that under the scheduled events. Or if it's not live yet, I thought it was going to go live this morning. Okay, because yep, somebody you. posted on Facebook, and um, it just keeps trying to download the app. And I've already done that. Oh, you shouldn't need any kind of app at all. If, if you're... If there was a link to the actual blab.im page, then you should be able to just click on that link. Are you using a phone? Uh, I'm using a phone, and it, it just links to download the app. Is it an iPhone that you're using? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, then on an iPhone, you can use the Blab app, so you will want that app to download if you're going to use it on the phone. But you can also use the blab.im location also. It doesn't matter which one you use. Um I would just recommend you go back one step to where it says beta up in the upper left corner of your window there. You uh, see the little blab icon with the owl's two eyes? No, I don't you see You might it. not see oh, it on your okay. phone too well. Yeah, okay. If you pick no, on that no, icon, no, and again, I don't use an iPhone, so I haven't checked how to get in and out. And Cassie, just one minute. I'm trying to help PJ get yeah, to no, us. Hey, I'm absolutely uh, listening and love it. Thank you so much. Can you hear wow. me? Yes, I can. You're coming through just fine, and your audio and video are both perfect, so you're, you're good to go. Thank you. Um, oh, yeah, PJ. Where, where are you guys? I'm just north of Detroit, Michigan. And I'm right outside of Washington, D.C. How about oh, you? Yeah. I'm in Cyberjaya, Malaysia. Malaysia? Oh. Wow, yeah. cool. Yeah, that's the neatest thing about this online blabbing is that we've been touching base with people all around the world, honestly, and it's just phenomenal what's been going on. And Blab's really only been in existence for about six months, but there's the majority of the action has only taken place in the last hundred days. So um, you're going to find a lot of newbies out here that have never used this platform before. So don't feel like you're out of place. There, there's a ton of new folks coming on every day. So okay, um, well, I just feel like I, I don't know how to use it, but I'm going to play around with it. And uh, thank you guys so much for your help. Yep, there's not much to it, PJ. You should actually find that 160-day entrepreneur is going to be the main window on Blab IM soon once they start pumping a bunch of people in there. Oh, because as users, I don't know. I haven't been looking for. I, I did. I, I know I, which I one you're started because I just came back from the Entrepreneur Summit uh, here, oh, okay. and it, it started uh, today. Yeah, and so, it's likely if you can find the link that was on Facebook. Look for the the 
the link that says blab.im. I'm thinking maybe, maybe they're streaming from the U.S. So if they're streaming from oh, the yeah. U.S. West Coast, it hasn't started yet. Oh, that's it's possible. 12 hours, about 12 hours difference. Yeah, I so, did not see what time it was that they were going to do that. So I know it's going on all week. But, yeah, you should just be able to hop in and out. It'll be on the main window page of Blab IM, I'm sure, before long. So is that space? We're working with uh, Blab. Me? I, I was going to ask. Blab. Yeah. Do I work for Blab? No, I don't. But I know some people who do. And we've been working in the background quite a bit to help people get in so that they can get a fresh start out here. We jump in these test zones all the time to make sure everybody's up and running. So Anyway, it looks pretty cool. So I'll try it out and I'll probably see you again sometime. Okay, looks sounds great. great. Leland, Thank before you, you jump off, can may I ask you what the 160 Entrepreneur, you said 160 Entrepreneur oh. was a blab what, that was going to see a lot of action. What is that? Uh, what what is that, that is, that's actually, actually having, my name from Paul Jones to PJ Entrepreneur or Paul Jones Entrepreneur. And uh, that's my real name because that's what I am. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can do any of the edits for your profile. And let me just give you guys a quick uh, hint about speaking on Blab. There is a filter that stops everyone else's voice from coming through when one person is talking. So if you try to step over or step on someone is what we call it out here on Blab, nobody's going to hear anything. So you always want to kind of wait for that little window. Or if you do start talking and someone else talks over you, either wait for them to finish or go ahead and say, well, I have something to say. And then go ahead and speak because otherwise when you're talking, everyone's voice just get stomped on and you can't hear anything so just something to keep in mind and background noises can affect that also that filter what's what's the window leland that tells you that someone's talking or it's your you can talk now there really isn't it's you just kind of have to listen in and know when somebody wants to say something <laughs> kind of your hand okay. some maybe and say i have something to say um okay and the other thing is on the chat to the side, you can always say, I would like to say something, but you can type forward slash Q and oh, you can do this. And this will allow you to type a question. The, the props added as a total or per blab. Uh, no, that's per blab. So if you do a slash Q, that will allow you to ask a question that will show up over here. And if you're hosting a Blab, you can actually pick on those questions. So, Tassie, if you were to pick on the question over there where it says answer question, when you pick on that button, it's going to put it into the window that's open on the Blab so that everyone can see the question up front and you can address that oh, question wow. particularly. That's neat. And then when you close that out, it just goes away. Now, you can also lock the seat. Because you are the only host right now. You could make me a co-host if you wanted to so that I would have the ability to let people into the Blab. If you lock right. the seat, you have like a quick interview with someone so that no one can sit in while you're speaking with that person. So that helps a lot to you know maintain the traffic flow through the Blab and everybody just gets to watch in the side. Um, the little hands that are in that question are the props added as a total per Blab. The little things that show up here to the right are what's called, they used to call them feels. Now they call them props because feels were a little bit, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> funky. <laughs> yeah. So a little touchy feely. So they decided to go with props. And this basically, it ups the visibility of your blab online. So a lot of people will, when they agree with what you say, they'll start picking on the, the props and what that does is it generates a little bit of buzz for traffic out there on Blab so that people say, hey, there's a lot of activity going on in this Blab. So it will start to move up on the ladder of visible Blabs on the front page of the live Blabs. So it helps to get your audience involved and encourage them to use those features. Um, you can pick on the person's name up above their picture in the window and be able to see their profile and then also, you can click on the Twitter bird and go directly to their Twitter profile since it is so connectively interlaced with Twitter. Um, up above, you'll see all the people that are in your room. The small icons to the left, the heads are the number of people who have been in the room. The one with the eyeballs are the ones who are actually present and visible here now watching what's going on. If you pick on either one of those numbers, well, just the icon really, 
you'll be able to see a full running list of the people who are in here and be able to follow them from that window. Oh, so I just, follow, I just followed you. That's really a great way to get your followers involved with Twitter, um, or I should say get your involvement in Twitter so that as you follow more people, when they come into your blab, you have the hopes, of course, of them following you. So it's a really good way to start putting together things for yourself. Um, there are the, the other one I want to mention is you see how the screen for the chat is dark right now. If you right. type forward slash, if you don't like that, some people prefer dark on white. Uh, you can type the words forward slash light, L I G H T, and that will give you the white background with the black text. So, wow, that's that's great. How do uh, so to make you a uh, co-host, you had to request to be a co-host, or do I? No, you have initiate? full control. This is your blab. So right now, you're actually recording this. When you came in, I you am. hit. Um, this is just going to be kind of something, and you'll receive an email from Blab that will say that your recording has been completed. That way, you'll be able to download both the audio track only, which is an MP3, and the MP4 video track, which is the whole thing together. All you're going to see are the windows that were active during the Blab. You're not going to see the chat. You're not going to see the names up above your picture or anything or any of the props down below. All you're going to see are the two video feeds. Um, but that can definitely be repurposed any way you'd like to use it um, on YouTube. You could upload it to YouTube. You can edit it and crop it and create smaller portions of the blab for whatever show you might want to create or create a blog post on certain amounts of content, obviously. Um, the tell a little, little bird and tell a little friend is just what it is. It, yeah. It's something you want to encourage people to do. It will generate quickly a small gif of the people who are in the room. It's an animated gif that gets generated of people like moving their hands and their heads. So if, like, if you were to do that with me right now, I'd probably be like this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with my hands going. Uh, the mentions, actually, the as far as the chat goes, I'm going to answer that question really quick. Um, in the chat, next to the person's name, you have a star, which is for you to uh, be able to acknowledge a person said something. So it's basically, yes, I saw what you said, and you've been able to identify that. So the person knows you saw what they mentioned. The arrow is a reply button so that it automatically tags the at name down into the chat window. So if you want to respond to someone, you simply hit that reply arrow and it'll start your response and then you can go ahead and answer in the chat. Uh, the mentions are whenever your name is mentioned in that way or if someone types your full at name, it's going to, if you flip over to mentions, you'll see where people have mentioned you in the chat. Um, so that helps you to identify those who have targeted you directly. And if you want to address those people or say hi or whatever it is, they're, they're responding to you and you can respond in kind. Um, the tell your friends obviously is used to say tell your aunt. <laughs> they just changed that. Uh, and keep this in mind, Tassie. This is a constantly evolving beta version of Blab. Right. So features are being added almost daily, and you're going to find some more things coming along. They're considering things like screen shares um, and larger windows, but that's they're not sure how they're going to in, uh, you know, incorporate that, if they're even going to do that yet, because this wasn't really intended to be a webinar platform of any kind. This is meant for collaboration. This is meant for, uh, honestly, it's, it's, a, it's a all about networking. It's an sit down, get to know your customers one-on-one. -on -one. There's a lot of awesome things going on here. There's a lot of amazing content being generated out here, but most people are really just sitting around talking. They're not trying, some people are holding up cards, you know, like, hey, you know, this type of stuff, um, but they're not really sharing their screens or anything like that. There are ways and methods to do that with certain broadcasting softwares that you can overlay on Blab, but it tends to dog it down and slow it up a little bit. So you kind of want to stay away from those until they get things going. But I, I use them every now and then for like lower thirds and such. And they may right. consider lower thirds on there. Because in the recordings, nobody sees your name or who you are or where you're from. So it, it would kind of benefit in the recording to have that stuff recorded. Um, hello, oh. Rob Hicks. How are you doing today? I haven't seen I was going to try to get into a blab with you earlier, Rob, or last night, I think it was, and I missed you. Sorry about that. Well, Leland, I want to tell you that I love Blab. Uh, I sat in on my first one as a guest last week. 
I think it's fantastic. It's the first video platform that I've really enjoyed. And I think it's because it is open and you don't have to have slides and you can have these great discussions. Uh, I never would have thought that I'd connect with somebody like you today. I go in here and I just thought, okay, before I go on at four o'clock this afternoon, let me figure some of this out. Uh, what would you suggest is the best way for those of us who are new to keep up with the changes? Is it just a matter of getting in, jumping in and doing it and then making yeah. sure we look around the screen and see what's new? Yeah, that's pretty much what all of it comes down to. And you'll start to get to know the people who are regulars out here because they'll be featured at the top of the live feeds quite right. often. Uh, Jonathan Tripp and I run usually a 10 a.m. slot. It's actually Jonathan's show. Uh, he does a 9.30 a.m. Um, podcast out on Periscope, which you'll discover a lot of people out here on Blab are actually Periscopers by nature. And what kind of happened interestingly is this became an organic melding of two platforms you have periscope as maybe the lead in and then people are coming over here hey how you doing um, coming over here as like the destination because being that periscope is more of a broadcast only one person presenting their opinion then it's all their followers can you can tell them hey i'm going to be over on blab here at 10 o'clock and all the people from periscope tend to follow you over here and have a sit down so that you can actually discuss maybe the topic that you introduced on periscope so that seems to be the way everybody's using it right now that's great i have one other question how do you invite someone else to come in and uh be one of the four windows one of the four people okay. All right, you have an open seat there down below. As long as you don't lock the seat, like if you lock it right now, go ahead and pick on lock seat. Now no one can come in. Got it. Now, if you unlock the seat, then one person can come in. And when someone else comes in, like if someone were to join us right now, another seat would open up. Um, and then that fourth person could join. You can't actually have two people come in at one time per se, because there's really no need for that. It's just one at a time will come into the window. And sometimes the windows will adjust, like you may suddenly end up down at the bottom when the next person comes in. So your eyes will tend to adjust to the four screens depending on who comes in the window and when. And we don't really know how that's determined, but. Right. So does the person on the chat ask to come in as one of the four seats? Typically, but what we've found for the format primarily oh, is people are usually sitting down and what'll happen, yeah, come on in, Kelvin. Hi, hi. And see hi, now, Kelvin. Kelvin, hi. Kelvin's obviously running, I'm assuming he's running Manicam because he has his lower third here on his, so what he's doing is he's running a software interface before he comes to Blab which is a broadcast, broadcasting interface that allows for the graphic overlay. And then he is going through two systems basically to get here. And it can cause lag at times if you have a slow computer, but if you've got the hardware for it, this allows you to do what Kevin Kelvin's doing over here. My computer's not slow, so I'm on a good connection. Yes. And, this, and my name saves confusion because my, yes. my name and my Twitter name are different. And people oh yeah. Absolutely. It's nice to have my name there. Yeah, definitely. Now, just as an example here, we have Leon trying to get into the blab, but he's just pulsing. Now, what that normally indicates is that he either has a slow connection or he's having some type of audio video issues. He may be on a cell phone with no good signal. He could be on a laptop or a computer that doesn't quite have the charge or the, the internet connection that he needs. Another thing that'll show up at the bottom of the window is poor internet connection bar. It's a red bar that shows up down here with a lightning bolt on it. And sometimes people can only come in with audio only because their internet connection is too slow. Um, so you may see that also, but you can still have them on the blab. Their video will be cut off, but they can still talk to you. And obviously anyone in the blab that just wants to do video or audio only, I'm sorry, can go up to that little uh, camera icon I told you about in the URL bar and change their audio and video devices. But the problem is when they do that, it doesn't automatically reset. You have actually have to leave the blab or refresh your browser and come back in again. Uh, yeah, I can cover bumping trolls, but it's, honestly, <laughs> what 
Bob, the, the best thing to do is to ignore them. Um, what's The more gravity you give to anyone that's trying to interrupt your blab, the less control you're going to have over the room and more you're going to be interrupted and kind of distracted from your purpose. So we tend to just tell people to ignore the trolls. You'll identify them pretty quickly if they're trying to. Uh, thanks, Calvin. I appreciate, you know, I'm glad to see that at least you gave us some idea what's going on. Uh, what he's using for his name display, if anybody didn't get that, is there's a few places. I'm going to list off. I'm going to throw a few of them up here on the screen just so people can go look at them. Um, many of them are paid items, So, but Manicam is actually free. Uh, you can look into it. One of them. Here, let me do this. I'm going to do it this way. Um, what this is normally called is uh, podcast. It's it's broadcast. It's yeah. it's live stream broadcasting software is normally what you would refer to that as. And I'm going to throw out a couple of them here that you might be able to use. Manicam, split cam, which actually split cam is I'm going to put ERA in the end because it's called split camera online. Um, and X split. These are the ones I'm going to recommend the highest. I hope that went through. Why didn't that go through? No, there there it, is. it is. Okay, so if you go online and, and Google Manicam, Split Cam, or go to splitcamera.com or X Split, there are free versions. Yeah, I haven't had too many problems with Split Cam if you use it properly. It takes a little bit of uh, going through it and understanding it, but I actually felt Split Cam ran smoother than X Split. Oh, no problem. Anytime. Uh, let me see who that is, D. All I see is D.I. Uh, you're more than welcome. I just got to find out what your name is up here. I'm looking for you. There she is. Or he. I want to make sure I'm talking to the right person here. I think Carlino was the last name. Charlie. Charlie Chap. As in Charlie Chaplin? <laughs> I just had to throw that in there. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. Yeah, Manicam is probably the most actively used. I use XSplit or SplitCam myself. I don't. I have all of them, um, and there's others out there. But some of the other ones that are set up for live streaming don't allow for what's called a virtual camera, which is how. And th those are the only softwares you can use out here on Blab IM. If it doesn't have a virtual camera device, which means you have an option to select a driver in that little video camera up there in the URL, then you can't use that broadcasting software. Things like uh, open broadcasting software, which is OBS, it's an open source version of a live stream broadcasting software, has the ability to do overlays, but you can only use it on YouTube or um, Oh, I always forget the name of that other one out there. There's some other tweet feeds out there that you can use. But um, yes, you can copy and paste. You can also um, put animated GIFs and links inside the chat window that are directly linked to whatever you decide to send them to. So if I wanted to send people to uh, if my messaging will work here, splitcamera.com. Those links will give you a direct link, and this is how you would uh, give people links to your websites or your capture pages if that's something you want to do in your Blab. Um, you can also direct them to other websites for content that you might want to discuss during the Blab. Uh, that gets done quite a bit where people will say, and here's an article I'm referring to today, and everyone can go watch, look at the article that you're referring to in your Blab. Um, that makes for a lot of neat things. But like I said, you can also just drag and drop a GIF let me find a real quick image here. Actually, any kind of image can be brought in. I need to reduce my window a little bit. You can pretty much just drag an image right into it, I believe. As I know, I've done it before. Is this an image from your computer or someplace else on the web that you're going to just... Yeah, just I'm just going to drag an image okay. right into the chat. I think I can. I used to be able to. I've done it before. Well, you went dark. I think he went dark, and uh, he's off finding his his image. Uh, what an incredible person, right? I went away. I disappeared. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I 
That was me dragging. I dragged the picture into the window, and I didn't do that right. So obviously, you have to send it via a link. Um, I haven't really done a lot of dragging and dropping of images into the chat, but I've left links to files online that were graphics that I knew the location of. Like, if you were to open up a picture online, and you just simply copy the link like you would on Google, to the picture page that it's located on, then it'll the picture will show up in the window rather than just the link. So that's oh, cool. and maybe oh, cool. I can maybe I can do that to show you what I mean rather than because you got to do it right or it doesn't work, right? Well, that always it. helps. <laughs> I totally agree. Always yeah, helps. Any other questions these. out there? Where where? Uh, so glad that you're here, Leland. For those of us who are new or who have just done one or two of these, uh, wow, a real font of, of knowledge. So thank you for taking the time. That's no problem. Okay, that image isn't going to work for me. I took one off a of wiki. Oh, the image is in a window. That's why. Uh, okay, that's why that one didn't work. Like I said, I haven't played with this too much myself. But yeah, you're going to find that there are going to be a lot of changes that are going to come up in the near future i'm sure they've been changing the format and layout of the uh, blab profiles there were like it used to be when you scheduled a blab and, and let's discuss that real quick um, when you're scheduling a blab you basically start a new blab on the main page you will be asked to give it a title you'll pick three tag names on the major on the main social tags that will allow you to identify what type of blab you're doing and then from there, you will add, it will ask you if you want to add an image to the frame. So, and they give you the the default size that you want to set it for. Uh, it used right. to be it would take your profile image, and now you can add a graphic. And you'll see a lot of the blabs now have this nice, pretty splash page that has a title on it and what the blab's about. So they've just incorporated that recently. And then it asks you whether you want to start the blab now or schedule it for later. So you can pick either start it, fire it up, or pick on the calendar dates and decide what time slot you want to add it to. And the time slot is based on where you're at. Um, and then schedule it for in the future anytime you'd like. And it will identify on the profile, you will have both an embedded code that you can paste in a website on a WordPress page or however you want to use that embed code. You will have links to that session on your profile and it will also have a running timer showing how long it will be before your Blab is going to start. So you can now direct people to your profile page with the link and that's where it's going to take them each time. They can either watch the feed from your profile they can become a participant within your site, or they can actually watch the live feed and participate in the chat from your website itself, which is really kind of unique, um, or just come right in and participate in the Blab. So there are several ways that that can be done, and you can, like I said, with uh, Kelvin, or it wasn't Kelvin, it was the other gentleman, JP, or PJ, um, you can have people that are out there on mobile devices come in. Uh, there isn't a chat, or there isn't a Blab, app for Google just yet, but they are working on an Android app, I believe. The only app available right now, yeah, I know, right? Uh, <laughs> the only app available right now is for iPad and iPhone, so yeah. um, we're adding that. I, I would just like to make a comment. I went ahead and scheduled the Blab for this afternoon. I'm doing it with, with somebody else, and uh, I was able to create one of those images so that the two pictures, our two profile pictures, were side by side. And I went in, uh, I actually use uh, PicMonkey, but I know you can go out and use Canva. So that's something that's really quick to be able to create one of those. I did have uh, some issues getting to what they said was the ideal size. I had to really play around with that and I had to do some cropping, but it's easy and it's nice to have something that is either showing the two hosts or the topic in some way. So I definitely will say that was super easy to set up a Blab. Uh, and I find, of course, we have you, Leland, right today, but it's just easy. There, there are a limited number of things to do, and I think that's what's so appealing about the platform. I know it'll grow, 
but right now it's all very manageable and it's easy to learn and it's great to get in on what, if I may say, is almost the ground floor. So uh, I hope everybody else thinks that. I know I do. Sure. Um, and Amnon just happened to walk into the room and Amnon, I think I'm going to allow you to define that a little better. Um, as far as the mic goes, he's, he's telling me, and, and honestly, folks, if you have not met Amnon Nissan, he is one of the gentlemen that may pop into your sessions every now and then. He is one of the lab participants um, who comes in to help folks every now and then. I remember the first time I was in a room by myself trying to get my split screens done up. Uh, Amnon happened to show up one day and, and stuck around until I got my lower thirds and my window in place. So um, always look for these folks and individuals that you may not expect to see that are out here helping you out. Most of them are Blab team members. So um, Amnon, I'm not sure. It sounds like she's using her mic and her laptop. No, actually she has, uh, it looks like earphones with a mic on it. Is the mic that you're using on your uh, headphone ring there? You know, it may not be. Okay. Um, what you'll find for sure, everyone, yeah, nope, it isn't the one in her headset. So she's using the one, are you on a laptop? Are you on a laptop, Tassie? Uh, no, I'm actually on a desktop and I just pressed, uh, I'm not sure. I just pressed the button here. I'm not sure if that's going to help or not. That could be the volume control for it, yeah. but it's not to say that it's going to work for you. So, and on, that's probably what's happening. She's using the mic on her headphone cord, um, most likely. Unless you have another mic in your camera, it could be the mic in your camera. Um, there are always little tweaks you want to consider, and that's just by, depending on what system you're on, whether you're on a Mac or if you're on a PC, there are always going to be ways you can go in and play around with your playback and recording devices, whether it's your headset, your speakers, or your microphone. Um, I don't recommend anyone have their microphone set at 100% um, level. It can tend to squelch a little bit if you do, but if you kick that back to like 95%, you'll avoid a lot of the overpowered charges that you're getting from your mic. The other thing is, is to always have a set of headphones on and never have open speakers because what ends up happening is the speakers get played back through the mic that you're using and then people start to get an echo on the other end. So you always want to have some type, whether it's plug-in earbuds or headset um, I have seen some people, and those who are really good at audio, I've done it before, you can manage mics and speakers in such a way that you can speak and not hear, you know, the other person's voice and the feedback, but that's what's called gating, and in order to do it properly, you have to really know what you're doing. Um, I've done it before out here, but it's not something I prefer to do. I like to just go with the headset and the mic and, and go from there, so... Uh, Leland, but, uh, if I may, uh, what headset are you using, particularly the manufacturer? This, uh, this is a Logitech 600 wireless, I believe. It's, uh, it, if I'm honest, I could say that this one may not exist um, unless you were to order it on Amazon nowadays. Any headset, I, I always recommend Logitech equipment because it's right. really in with PC. Um, the Apple equipment, of course, for the Apples tend to work much better for those ends. Um, I don't recommend Bluetooth devices because Bluetooth signals tend to break up really easily. And I've tried several different Bluetooth devices out here and the audio video just doesn't sync real well. There's a delay in most cases with those devices. So I don't recommend anyone out here to use Bluetooth have a, either direct plug-in or a good wireless headset to, to make it work right. And yes, Chrome Tassi is the other thing that I definitely recommend everyone come out here. You can use Firefox, but Safari will not work. Um, I have used Opera and Opera does work. Internet Explorer likely will not work at all no, because it doesn't. Th this is based on WebRTC technology, which Internet Explorer does not support. Um, Firefox does support WebRTC, but Chrome is what it's optimized for. So we always recommend you use Chrome. Got it. Oh, so Evan yes. is telling me how to do this. This is great. I will definitely go out and look at that. Yeah, and that's what I was telling you earlier is you can make the two, and I, I see what you're getting at now, Amnon. I didn't realize where you were headed with that. That's under that camera icon in your URL. You can set the additional changes if you pick the link at the bottom of that window that pops up. Yes, you can do it now if you'd like. Go ahead and select so that. Chrome content scroll to see the mic and camera. Change it to yep. headset. I don't have a headset, though. I just have the earphones. Yeah. So I'll have to get a headset. 
Got well, it. I haven't had any real problem. I, maybe Amnon, I'm not sure if you're having trouble with uh, her sound. Are you not hearing her well? Because she sounds fine on my end. Oh, it's <laughs> uh, that's actually just this is just a volume control. Leland is yeah. right to yeah. the that's earphones. Not, it's not a mic. She's using the mic in her camera. Yeah. On, on the actual desktop. Um, and let's answer Charlie's question about slides if we haven't missed him yes. already. He may yes. have left the room. I'm not sure if he's still here. Um, as far as the yes. slides go, yes, you can use the X split or ManyCam for displaying your desktop. However, because you have such a small amount of real estate to work with, it doesn't really come across like you're going to hope it to because unless you have Zoom features on your system, uh, you're not going to be able to see everything that's on your screen. Now, that can be done in most systems like that, but I really don't recommend you come out here to do any type of slide displays until they either incorporate it or it becomes you know, a, a built-in feature. And, and honestly, because this is a public setting, it's not really if you're out here to do a webinar that's one thing and that's not what this software was intended to do it's not the purpose the purpose is networking the purpose is collaboration the purpose is getting to know your audience and getting to know the people in your niche um, it gives a better chance for you to really I, I guess communicate with people at a at a better level than what you might do on email and twitter and social networks one, one thing I would like to say that I, a use I saw for, I'm giving two webinars this week and I'm using, you know, probably old technology. I'm using Instant Teleseminar, which is a nice workhorse and it's okay. very basic and it's good for the webinar and the slides. But what I've decided to do is offer to run through the same information on those webinars mm -hmm. in a Blab session, but I'm not going to have slides. Yeah. You know, I know the material well enough that I'm just going to present it in a Blab session. And it's going to be for those people who, number one, want to try out Blab, but number two, who couldn't come to the time at which I had the webinar. So I saw this as another great extension of passing information along that is more casual and may be preferable by some people. So that's another way you can, if you give webinars, you can go ahead and use Webinar Jam or Instant Teleseminar or whatever is else you use and then come in and do this for a different format for those people who like to learn differently yes absolutely it's a good destination point um let me just help i want to address di real quick um, i'm not sure how to, that was charlie chap okay um if you click on that little icon the camera icon up at the top of end of your the right end of your url bar you will see which camera and mic you're using, and right below that is another link that allows you to add some additional and advanced features or, or get into some of the other settings. So, okay, he's got it. Um, yeah, but I did want to go back one just for a second on. Uh, I mean, there are other platforms also, and I, I'm not here, I know, with Amnon in the room, I'm certainly not going to recommend other platforms because Blab is our destination here. But being that it is a public forum, there are some private you know, types of similar platforms that if you really wanted to be hush hush about what you do and only invite a certain number of people, I could certainly recommend or give you some information on that outside of Blab. Um, as far as the content here, obviously, it's all about being public. It's not about hiding what you're doing to a certain, you know, select group of people because people can come in and out as they like. Um, oh, I thought you did work for Blab, Amnon. I'm sorry. I assumed, and that's my fault, so I have to be careful there. I, I always thought you were one of the folks who were working in the back uh, of Blab there. Yeah, that's great. Fantastic, because you helped me out that day. I know that for a fact. Um, the other thing, we were going to talk about trolls real quick, and there are ways you can boot people. So just to keep that in mind, uh, Tassie, if you select near the people in the chat, you should have an X. It used to be a trash can. There should be an X also because you're the starter of the blab. Right. You, should, you can boot people from the room that way. Um, you can also boot people out of the chair, you know, if they're getting out of control, obviously. Um, you can just X them out and get rid of them. 
Um, but that X over on the chat is your way to block people from the blab. Um, because you do run into some folks. We had an issue with some folks that came in off of Snapchat the other day. Some some of that YPR young youth uh, that don't seem to want to do anything but cause trouble. Uh, mm. They come out here and they act innocent at first. And they, they act as though they're interested in your subject matter. And then they try to distract the, the topic to something either sexual or inappropriate. And you, you just have to deal with them or ignore them. Um, most of the time, we just ignore them and then boot them out of the room. And, and where is, uh, Leland, where is the X on the chat, the red X? It should be next to their name. What do you have next to their name when you highlight on someone in the chat? You should have a star, a uh, reply, and I believe you have an X there, don't you? I don't. I don't have an X. I, I have thought... a star and a reply. How do you do that, Anna? I could have swore. Or maybe it's up top in the other window. I haven't really booted anybody yet, so. <laughs> huh. Check up at the top when you select yeah. up on one of the persons in the room. Or maybe it's in the, the feed if you select the eyeball at the top. Oh, yeah, that's where it is. Okay. Uh, when you select on a person who's in the room that's yeah. live, uh, okay. and let me check even, yeah, when it's live, so select one of those small circles with their profile image in it. And then yeah. in the upper right-hand side, it's not an X. It looks like a, a, a road sign, and it says oh. you can report a spam or uh, block it. Okay, gotcha. And the other thing, too, is you'll see, for instance, there's a plus one there at the top on the bar. Yeah. That's someone who's watching outside of the room. And hi to you, whoever you might be. Um, Welcome. What that, what that just means is they have not actually logged into the Blab and are not participating in the what we call the fan seats normally. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just someone who's observing either from Blab IM's main page, and they may, they're able to chat there in the window. Uh, but primarily, they could be over on someone's website where this was embedded also, um, just watching from the website and not accessing the chat feature, but simply are participating that way. Anyone that's attached to the feed will show up in that plus one, and that number will increase as more arrive on that channel. Um, but I think that's about it. And then, of course, you always want to pause or stop your recording before you leave the room. It will right. save it. I have done that once. But it will slow down your your response time in getting your recording if you do that. So make sure you pause or stop your recording before you leave the room. And and a good a good way to go is when you come in here, have a little chat session with the people you're going to sit down with first. Is normally what we do before our ten o'clock show. Talk about what you're going to discuss. Give them some insight on how this works and direction you're going to go in, and then. Start your recording and say, hi, this is Leland Best over the Megabit Affiliate. We're here with so-and-so, and we're going to talk about such and such. And that is your intro to your recording. Always give yourself that couple of seconds, of course, for it to kick in. And then just before you wrap up, say, well, I want to you know, do the same thing. Well, it's been a pleasure having everybody here on Blab, and we want to thank our guest. And this is so-and-so, and we're signing off, and then pause it and end it. And that way, your recording will be finally trimmed up without having to do any editing or adding uh, features from uh, the intro and the X out. So it, it seems to work really well that way. So just to, to summarize, leave a little space up front and some uh, air space up front and air space at the end. And not much. It, it, the recordings tend to lock in pretty well with where they're at. But I have seen some get chopped off um, with people yeah. like leaving the room. When I did my, when I left the room, it chopped it off um, right as I left the room. And it didn't actually finish what I was saying. Um, and I'm not sure why I did that. Or I, I cut it off while I was talking, but I did it like right after I said what I said. That's how it went down. I, I was trying to close out, but as soon as I said goodbye, I clicked stop record. And it didn't even get that last couple of seconds of what I had said. So right. it, is a, it is an online environment where you're broadcasting to the Internet and then recording rather than a direct record feed. You want to make sure you do it that way. All right. So if anyone has any questions, yeah, I was any, just go ahead, Tessie. I was just going to say any uh, last questions for Leland uh, or myself, I'm going to have to hop off too. But uh, this has been superb. I, I, I feel so I would have gone into four o'clock today and, and probably just, you know, oh, no. been totally lost. This is super. I can't thank you enough. Does anybody else online uh, listening have any questions for Leland? 
Yeah, I'd be happy to answer. And if you you can also select my name in the video feed there and get a follow on my page. Um, I am out here regularly, pretty much every day. There are Sorry, several others, there are several of others of us out here, like Amnon Nissan and and many more that we're associated with. Um, that they're actually one of the gentlemen, Matt Duncan. I'm involved with. If you ever see Matt out here, he's in the process of developing a Blab Academy that'll be a separate website. He's not associated with Blab, but he's doing this on his own to try and get uh, similar to the YouTube Creators Academy, so that people will be able to understand how to fully use Blab as a, a commercial environment. Um, And you know, I am not. I find it interesting. You're hearing her as a tunnel. She found she sounds perfectly fine to me. I, I don't see what's going on with uh, your, your sound over there. I know it really depends on what people are hearing sometimes in their own systems, but I, I have not heard any glitches in her audio at all. But I think uh, it's that's right. I think it's good to invest in in uh, because I really want to do this more and more. I, I'm really loving oh, yeah. it. So sure. time to invest. <laughs> yeah, and it, you know there are some high-end equipments, and if you look into um, Audio Technica, has some equipment for mics and things like that. Um, if you just do a search on uh, Amazon for cardioid mics, uh, if I can spell that right for you, mics. those are the type of mics that you'll normally find. Let me get that right. Or even broadcasting microphones. I have a list of them on my, well, I'm actually working on one right now. I haven't gotten to it yet. Um, and, and don't be scared when you see some of the prices on some of them, but there are some you can get yeah, for around, yeah. let me find the one I was looking at. Hold well, Amon is, is saying an ATR 2100. So that's one that's to look up. One. For anybody online. That, that's one for sure. There are so if you look up podcasting mics, even would be another way. But let me I have a page that I'm drafting in my uh, website right now. I have not posted it yet. Um, but I can give you an idea. There's another one out there that's not a bad mic. It's a 2500, I believe, on Audio Technica. But that's not the one I was thinking of. Let me get to my site real quick. And sometimes you'll find when you're in the background trying to browse sites, because you are connected to a live feed broadcasting uh, network site, you can have quite a bit of lag in the background while you're opening windows. So be careful there. At least you have to wait sometimes. <laughs> I just read your, uh, your note, Amnon, about the second mortgage. So if that's a 2005, I'm not going to get that one. No, there are some, I, I'm going to recommend a mic out here in just a second. And again, I would post my page, but it's not actually finished yet because I'm putting together a list of several mics that can be used in po podcasting and broadcasting like this. Um, but I'm not going to really put that out there yet. I know I got one here somewhere, but I got to find it. Well, I, I would have to agree with uh, Durham uh, Skywriter because I've been working with uh, someone uh, as a video coach and, he, and uh, yet another person, and they absolutely love the Yeti Blue mics. So that's yes, one too. That that's an external yes. though. It's not built into the headset. Yes. And that's why I, I really like the headset mics myself, just because uh, it yeah. seems to work really well and you don't have to. The one problem is sometimes you're out here on a really long blab and you're then if you're wireless and your battery runs out on you, you're kind of stuck. Um, yeah, here, the Blue Microphones Yeti USB mic is about $100, but there are also other Blue Microphone series that run under 100 bucks. and same with uh, Audio Technica's. Uh, let me find the other one I was looking for. There's one on the new website out there, iJet.com, I think. Oh, where is it? I had a link to it. I was going to buy it the other day. That new Jet.com site that's out there. Let's see if I can get that link because it was only about forty dollars, and it was I don't know how many they have available. And I think it. that uh, someone just made also a good point about the Yeti, which is because it's external, you have to be in a really quiet place, otherwise you'll pick. Well, yeah, you up. do. 
but there are those are normally built in with interference filters that you don't have to worry too much about because they only pick up the low, but they can. I mean, obviously, you want to be in a room with a closed door. We'll find a lot of people out here at times that um, are in rooms and near their family and such, and the kids are screaming in the background, and you're like, okay, 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 here it is. It's a Bad Axe uh, UM600, and it goes for about $50 on Jet. I'm going to leave a link here. And that's B A D A A X is the mic. Um, but that was one that's relatively cheap. But for headsets and, and wireless, you can certainly get out there and find a Logitech or any other name brand that will work just fine. Yeah. And then when you really want to go pro, you can get out there and get your mixers and your computer audio mixers and you know the fancy high-tech hd webcams and mount another cam on your other you know <laughs> monitor and really go crazy out here but um yes dynamic mics are obviously going to be working out better for you and is the uh bad axe and the atr 2100 are they dynamic mics yes. or no? they dynamic. are dynamic any cardioid mic is normally a dynamic mic, and those those condenser mics work. But um, it, it really depends. I've I've seen some cardioid condenser um, omnidirectional dynamic mics. You can buy at Radio Shack for about fifteen bucks. Um, I, I believe they're Audio Technicas also. So don't don't leave out the chance that you could go find one for fifteen dollars. And it would be a normal, it would be a mic similar to this. It would right. look like that. And you could just go pick that up because I can show you, for instance, let me do this real quick. Uh, oops. I'll show you what I mean in a second here. We can get to it. Should be able to hear a couple of feeds from me. Whoops, I got to reset it. Hold on. Check one, check two. I guess I'm not getting a feed through there. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Oh, it's not plugged in, that's why. I'll give you an example. Sometimes you just have to plug them in. So you'll hear a slight difference. And I think we lost your audio. I did. I can't. I can't hear. Oh, I know what it is. It's because, all right. The reason for that was because I didn't set my audio for my mixer when I came in, so I couldn't switch mics. Normally, I have the ability to switch between two or three different mics if I want. If one goes out, I can switch to another. So, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. I got you. You can hear me okay now, right? Yes, absolutely. You're All right, good. good. You're good. Okay. Any um, other last questions? Wow, you, you've given us a, an hour of your time today and then, as I said, just a wealth of information. Any other uh, questions out there that we can uh, handle? This was getting started with Blab and I have to, he was not my guest. I, I love the fact that you jumped in, you became my guest. Uh, Leland Best, uh, I've got to give you a big hand well, because you. I feel so much better and so excited to be getting uh, getting on to, to Blab. Um, I hope to be here for a long time, and I'll I'll grow up with it uh, and learn a lot with it. Thank you. And that's not a problem. I would love to have uh, an access also, if you don't mind, Tassie, just get a hold of me through Twitter. Um, once you get the uh, audio or the video ac actually both recorded, um, I would love to be able to link to them on your YouTube channel if you have one or yeah, if you wanted to uh, give me a link somewhere on your website where I can access the recording, that'd be great. And I'll send some traffic your way. So I'll, I'll definitely do that. I've already followed you um, practicing okay. how to do that live. So you've got a new follower. There's no doubt about that. I'm thrilled to be uh, meeting you. I think you said you are a Michiganer. Love that too. And uh, I thank everybody for being on. Uh, Ammon, thank you so much. You've added a lot to the discussion about the audio. And uh, 
I think that this is a platform that will be around for a while. So I thank you for making it so good. I, I, I see we might have missed, and I don't know if Yolanda got out of the group already. I see she had a question here about specs for the images, and I'm sorry if we didn't address that question. Um, the only real mention we were making about images was how to put an image on your broadcast before it starts. The, the size required for that image is listed right there where you upload it, so there's really no question as to what type and size of image you have. Um, you can't use a GIF on that page, but you can use anything you've pre-formatted uh, with a title and your image or what have you. If you don't use that image, it's going to use your profile image, so just keep that in mind. And it may create one of its own if you have assigned guests and created the at twos in your title so that if you have like uh, your guest name uh, interview with so-and-so and you use the at, I believe they will use their profile picture in that saved image also that it generates automatically. So. Yeah, and, right. and again, I would just like to add, uh, I just went into something as simple as PicMonkey, but Canva's out there also. I started with, a, a Canva has a, a Facebook size. You can start with that. You can downsize it. Or on something like PicMonkey, I just put in what was the recommended Blab image size that Blab gave me on the page where I set up my Blab for this afternoon. So yes. it's pretty straightforward. And it doesn't have to be profile pictures. Uh, you can create your own graphic, make it look really cool. If you have a show which you want to have on a regular basis, come up with some type of uh, logo or image for the show, and you're ready to go. Yeah, and I can recommend a couple. There's a feed out there, uh, and honestly, folks, there's a feed that's going to be live all week. It's going to be, I, I think it's more of a marketing type feed, but there's going to be people out there all week long, 168 hours of continuous blabbing. So that one will start to feature at the top page, and you'll be able to see a lot of folks in there. It, it'll be a great place to pick up a whole bunch of followers if you go in there and follow some folks while it's running. Um, the other thing, there is a daily Q show, I believe, is at 3 p.m. I'm not sure, Amnon, you might know better than me. Um, there's a couple folks out there that run that one, and it can vary as far as the host goes, but um, I think you'll find her out there quite a bit running the daily Q show. I had her name written down here, but again, we're all getting to know each other right now, so it's a good thing to have a notebook handy and start writing down some names of the ones that you see on a regular basis, and you'll identify them pretty quickly. There are several out here, and you're, we're starting to see a bunch of live broadcasters on radio shows coming out here. I, I've actually encountered uh, the Emmy award-winning uh, sound engineer who worked on We Are the World. I've run into several other big people in the music industry. Um, there are several online podcasters who are now getting into the live feed broadcasting. So you're gonna find some pretty famous folks out here that you're gonna be able to go one-on-one -on -one and face-to-face -face with. So enjoy your time out here, you'll have a ball. Will do. I thank you all very much. We're going to wrap for today. And uh, everybody have a great day, great upcoming week. And um, think about blabbing. Talk yeah. with everybody a little bit later. Take all care. Right, Jessica, pleasure meeting you. We'll see you later. Bye bye, Leland. Same thing.